like that. So I haven't quite yet decided what I'm going to do as far as the texturing goes, if we're going to keep it to Photoshop or if we're going to play around with a little bit of poly painting. I think we might do just Photoshop, but we'll keep it in mind. For now, what I want you guys to focus on is working on the muscles. So we have the base, right? This is our feline base. But now what you want to do is start thinking about fibers. So really muscled creature, really strong. Using the clay brush here, lazy mouse and lazy radius on one here, I want to do some connective tissue, some interesting looking shapes, and everything in between is basically what I'm shooting for right now. And that does not mean I will shy away from not adding some muscles where there maybe shouldn't be any. Again, this is a creature. We're doing what we can, and I want to make it different. And uh, if, if making it different means changing a little bit of the anatomy, then that is totally fine. It's still a creature that doesn't exist. It's just rooted in reality. But you see that just by doing this little bit of work here, we can really start uh, playing around with our creature because when we do things like detailing we're gonna go ahead and start thinking about a story for this uh, creature not just you know designing the body and thinking about you know why is it like this why is it that is it we're trying to give it a story is like a hunt that went bad scars you know damage something like that because all animals are gonna have that in some way and that's important for us to clarify. So just using the clay brush here, add myself some organic looking details, finding things that I've already added and working on them. So something like this here, I can definitely think about adding some very cool, different looking uh, detail of sort of being attached to it. And, you know, just using the Damien Standard Brush here to really, you know, hammer home that we've got some very interesting, and very complex skin development going on here. Using Alt with the Damien Standard is a good way of doing that, too. As you can see, easy to add some very interesting things. just refining and this makes a big big difference and this little piece of skin I want to sort of add like a rippling effect as it goes up like you know seem like when he's running this is gonna stretch and uh, maybe since he runs too fast or something like that this here is sort of like a limiting factor so that he won't get injured when he's running because he won't you know move his leg farther out than he's supposed to which could happen, you know, what if he steps on something, trips, you know, this could hold it there, and that's an interesting way of thinking about it as well, so just something, you know, something else to add to reasons why I added this little piece here. Now, I'm not a person that is, you know, I'm not a scientist or anything like that as far as the biology goes, but for me, it's definitely starting to look a little bit more interesting. So um, let's see here. I did lose a little, uh, I did forget to do symmetry. So I'm gonna pause the video really quick. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, go to deformations and resim just so I get all my detail on the other side. I'll be back in a second so we continue working. And we're back. I didn't wanna waste your time uh, waiting on the symmetry to be redone. So let's continue where we were. I'm gonna go up here on my, uh, level two subdivision usually when you do any kind of resim you want to just go to the lower it'll usually just reproject stuff pretty well um so working on these areas trying to just refine how everything is looking just make sure everything looks very really nice and solid and they have some interesting shapes to pull from so there's a big big muscle here that we can sort of pull out and that's going to give us an interesting thing to look at on the legs at the very least and this area here is divided into a few groups so I'll just add a little bit of the muscle information there 
which should be more than enough to sort of get us to where we want. As far as the back of the leg here, let's just uh, be careful when adding some volume, but uh, I do want it to look very nice. Basically, the back of the leg here is just like our leg, so you would just separate it like this going into the calf. It's the best way to describe it. Easy way to fix it, anyway, like so. And then uh, you can attach it down here. And that'll give us another little piece of muscle to play around with. So you see, always going back to that regular animal anatomy, looking for tips and tricks to just keep ourselves within that realism, which is going to be our end goal. So I'm going to be careful here. Basically, we do have the bones of the leg coming out like this. I want to make sure it looks fairly nice, just chunky enough, basically. Again, don't spend too, too much time with this stuff uh, if you don't have to, which is exactly what I'm doing. You see, the clay brush is really good at sort of hinting at more complexity beneath the skin, right? So you can add a few strokes here, and then voila, there looks like there's some sort of muscle coming down from there, and that looks convincing enough. And that's all we want, convincing enough at this point. And attach this here as a whole thing. Make sure the arm is just looking like it's one piece for the most part. Like so. Now, I like where this is going on some areas. Not sure about this flat area here, so I'm going to go ahead and just fill that in and maybe distance these a little bit more from the feet. Like so. And then uh, we can probably pull these up like tendons or something uh, make it look a little bit more powerful the tendons tend to, to give you that feel it's just something stretching pulling on and it'll give you something else to to distract the eye on this area again don't be too worried about it but always important to if you're going to do something, at least refine it enough, right? It's a good rule of thumb. Now, moving this here, I would probably just cut this here. And uh, let's use the snake hook, which is a little bit more extreme, and just pull that inward, like see. So you see how we can just separate the nails like that? And, not even worry about it anymore. And I think if we can get a good shape going here with these nails, we're going to definitely benefit from that. So you can curve these out or something like that. And then uh, these will look a lot more interesting. You can also use your trim brush to sort of give you that metal feel if you're looking for that, like me. It's good to just define some planes here and make sure that you know it's it's looking sharper. Again, always that tip. Pull that end and smooth it. See how it makes everything look that much more menacing. And just uh, wondering here, as you can see, my my nails aren't really lined up, so we can do it by hand. So something like that. It's going to work. And yeah, so those are some pretty decent body refinements already. Uh, again, we're not going to play too, too much more around with this, I don't think. I want to get us uh, going on the face. I want to do the eyes and I really want to focus on making the face very expressive because I think if we're going to do a, a really nice uh, shot, it's going to be from this angle. So I'm going to rotate the face towards this, and I really like all the sculpting that I've done all the way up to this point. You know, What I can see from over here is, is really helping me uh, sell the model, I feel. So we'll just leave it like this. So anyway, I'll see you guys with the detailing.
Now, before we do anything, uh, we want to just continue sketching a little bit more here just to get an idea of what we're doing. So, cut in the eyes, right? So, and uh, we should have a nice little area that we can pull out now because we need lids, remember? So, something like this. So, we have this area here. And I guess we can divide it once at the very least now and start thinking about adding some eyelids like this. So you see, very simple, very basic, still fairly sharp. Now we can add the sphere in there, which is important. Always remember that the eye shape itself, it needs to conform to a sphere. So whether you like it or not, uh, you, you definitely want to place that sphere in there. I've already dynamished, by the way, since it's uh, uh, on my uh, shortcuts here, on my interface. But one of the biggest mistakes I see new artists that are joining Zebra, you know, trying to use ZBrush, is that they just forget that if your eye is round, that your eyelids should follow it. So here's one of those tips again, where you can just come in here on the eye area and then just pull it outward and remember top and bottom need to be round looking can't be ovals it just needs to be round so like this see all of that proper round shape and then you look at it and you'll see how you get that nice uh, profile going because you can change the shape anytime you want after this however if you don't get it right in this regard won't matter what shape you have it's always going to be a little weird. So something like this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mirror this uh, this sphere over there, just so we are on the same page. And let's see here. I probably want to Z remesh this face. So here's what I'm going to do. Anytime you're going to work on something that is going to need a proper detailing work, and you've already sort of uh, established, let's just say, the main idea behind the design, then you want to go ahead and uh, Z-remesh it right away. I didn't do that for the body because I don't think it's going to be necessary, honestly, and I don't want to have to reproject things and so on. So while we could definitely get away with just dividing here, we could also Z-remesh. So we'll see if I find a need for that in a second. So, just refining the face, you can see that by adding the eyelids, we'll definitely get a lot closer to a finished result. And now I'm just going to go ahead and just do this. And the nose, I'm going to sort of design a little bit of a, a line going back here like this, which I like very much. I'm going to go ahead and come in here with the Trim Dynamic Brush and just give it a little bit of a hit on the underneath of the nose, which I think is important. I'm going to dig this and then dig that. And then we'll go ahead and just move the nose a little bit here. Now, what we can do is do the feline thing, which is split it in the middle here. Should be cool. And we can pinch it together. Try to keep it as best as possible. The thing about, you know, doing a dynamesh or something like that is that you tend to not have a center line for the most part, so usually you don't get the exact result that you would if you otherwise, you know, had zero meshed it already. So there's also an advantage in that sense to zero meshing sooner than you normally do. But you do lose the design, you know, ease of design that Dynamesh gives you. So as you can see, still just doing my best here to get something to look interesting. I already have more or less what I want. It's just a question of getting it to look good. 
Doing lots of trim dynamics here to get the nose to a cool shape. Remember the teeth area that I mentioned? Always good to pull that out. And then you can cut the in-betweens if you like. Always a good idea. Dig that inward as well. You know, the in-betweens of the teeth is something you should dig in just because. Now, uh, you could argue that you should probably, I should probably add some teeth over here. Um, but I don't know. I think it would be a little bit excessive, honestly. I think what we can do is just maybe do a little bit of a, a lip here, and that's, that's about it, honestly. I think I like that better than adding a whole bunch of stuff to it. So I'm just going to cut this in here. Some very faint looking lips. So maybe this creature has more to it than we think. And I'm really liking how this face is looking. Really, really enjoying it. He's got this. He still looks like a lion, which really help, really sells it to me, I think. I'm going to keep everything symmetrical, okay, for now. I don't want to worry about anything else uh, in this point. Just working on it. And as soon as you start to really like uh, your design, that that's generally means you're in the right direction. Uh, if you don't like it, uh, you know, after a few hours of working on it, then you really got to try some radical things to see if it's going to really be the way you want it to. Um, because at the end, end of the day, if you don't have a brief or anything like that, it's always going to have to sort of apply to your sensibilities. And, you know, it's going to have to be good to you. It's going to be a creature that you would like to see somewhere, you know. And while you may argue that sometimes the director is the one calling the shots and you don't want to put too much of yourself in a, in a design uh, because, you know, it may get shot down, or which is quite common, really. Uh, directors go back and forth all the time, you know. Projects that I've worked with that I've had some sort of design stage... Uh, in my hands, uh, definitely not getting attached is a very good idea, but I still think you've got to make something that you like. It still has to be something you're proud of, no matter how different it may be from what you normally do and, and things like that. So, just just a thought while we're refining here this sculpt. Not sure I like this area here of the nose, but I'll just add a little bit of crinkling here. Maybe make this nose a little bit smaller. And then what we can do is maybe thin it out as well. So, so you see that even in this stage we make some changes that really do alter our face. But we're definitely getting there, and I, I'm, I'm really liking where this is going. I'm going to pull out a little bit of a bony tip down here. I'm just going to trim it, give ourselves a highlight to play with there. And I really like where this is going. Yeah, this is definitely looking pretty interesting. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, stop it here. We'll continue working on this face here in the next lesson. Then we'll move on to detailing, painting, and then we'll finish this guy out. We have uh, a lot of things to do. And I've already sort of decided uh, where I'm going to focus my attention. It's probably going to be something like this. So this is probably going to be our render. I'll just make him face us or something like that. That way we can see all of the detail that we've got going on here and can really start playing around with things so we don't really have to focus too much on the on the feet and the legs 
Speaking of which, I've uh, made these a little bit longer, but not by that much in between lessons. So let's go ahead and continue on the face. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and divide it one more time. I don't think we're going to need to Z remesh this. So let's keep going. Just using the Damien standard here to do everything that I did and just go and doing a once over. I really like adding these expression lines on this uh, dome area. And again, this is probably the best possible resolution to start adding some of this stone, uh, you know, chipped, very polished look. Oops. Uh, also, I think we're going to diminish this space, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, mask the eyes, so something like this, and I'm just going to pull this inward like that. And that's going to give us a more interesting looking thing to do. So see how uh, looking at your model from various angles is really going to be very helpful to you in the long run. You see how just this changes the demeanor completely right so you can make it higher make it lower but it still makes a whole bunch of sense when you do it and nothing looks out of place this is the important bit can't look out of place now most of times when we talk about this bone here the zygomatic bone it's going to be towards the side like this so i'm going to make sure it is towards the side and i'm going to do a little bit of a sort of human anatomy thing here where I'm just going to do a little bit of a just a little bit of a tick in here just a little shape and then uh, we can go ahead and, and break that off with uh, trim dynamic should we feel it is necessary I think it gives us interesting profiles to play around with and uh, that is always interesting Again, we're not going to go completely overboard with this. Uh, this is probably more than enough to sell our design, but I still want to work a little bit more on it. I may consider teeth for the front. I'm really, really debating this, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure quite yet. For now, this is okay. So when looking for things to detail, just make sure to add something different and uh, try to make sure it belongs. So you see that I'm pretty off here, so I'm going to push this all the way in with Trim Dynamic and then just pull out again. Cut, pull out, cut, pull out, and then Trim Dynamic. Once again, cut, pull out, and then this will give a lot more depth uh, to our uh, depth, not death, <laughs> uh, to our model. So, continuing to add some very interesting details there. I'm really liking where this is going, honestly. That's always a good sign. So, Attaching the head to the neck again is going to be a little bit tricky, but I think we can do it. Just make sure to add some muscles coming down here. Something like this. Yeah, this is going to look really interesting. But I think we're ready, guys. I think we're definitely ready to just focus on the model in this sort of a uh, position of the camera and start the detailing process you know add some scars add some pores add some leathery skin things like that I think that'll that'll be really really clutch very soon here so let's just divide this one more time add some more interest to it again don't want to overdo it because the thing to keep in mind, once again, 
just if it's not clear quite yet. If you spend too much time on this, and then it comes back and isn't approved, then all that time is wasted, right? So does this give the idea? Yes, it does. Okay, then let's detail it uh, just uh, enough, you know, with some alphas to get it to look more interesting and be done with it and see what they say. And if it's good, then it's good and you'll see it. And you'll see it, uh, you know, become a thing. If not, then back to the drawing board we go. But I think this is uh, pretty cool so far. And yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, stop it here. Go ahead and see you guys in the next lesson where we'll detail the body, uh, add some scars, you know, something like that, and uh, add the face in preparations for our render. Now, before I go, I'll say this. Uh, we're probably just going to do a straight render in Keyshot with uh, a skin texture and then use a whole bunch of images in Photoshop for our textures. I think that's the easiest and fastest way to texture for production. Uh, and as far as uh, a design standpoint goes, I think Photoshop is your best tool. So I think that's what we're going to do when uh, when it comes to texturing. I think poly painting is all well and good, but it still requires... I would say a lot more attention to detail and uh, art design than a concept like this is uh, worth in the stage that it's at. You know, I, th I still think if you go back to that rule of, hey, is it going to be worth it? It's probably not going to be worth it. Better to spend your time in Photoshop with some images to get the idea across, I think. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, stop here because I definitely didn't stop. <laughs> and I'll uh, before we take it into Keyshot get ourselves a render and play around a whole bunch in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and work on the body for a little bit. So I'm going to divide this a couple times here. Uh, again, I'm just going to focus on this upper area here. That's what I'm going to go ahead and render out in Keyshot. So again, something like this is what I'm going to go for uh, as far as the shape of everything goes. Uh, now, uh, what you want to do is just uh, click the standard brush here. Oops thought ZBrush was going to crash there for a second. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, move it here. Grabbing our standard brush here, we're going to go ahead and grab the spray. And then we'll just grab alpha 50. It's good. So here's a thing I'm going to show you. Learned this from uh, Scott Spencer a long time ago. If you... Well, as always, if you're going to use alphas, use a very low intensity, okay? But uh, just so you guys see, if you use alpha 58 and spray and just do circles, you get a pretty cool uh, skin effect. See? And uh, obviously, you don't want to propagate that to, like, the neck or something. The neck, you would probably want to do uh, straight up and down, probably without symmetry, if you ask me. But something like that is a, is a pretty cool and easy way to add uh, some effect to your creature so as you can see so i don't want any on that uh on that uh plate area up there but on everything else i can definitely go ahead and uh and do so just see uh, nice little circles here you can, you can really up the scale or you know you can really change uh, how it looks like depending on your draw size so uh, i also like to smooth it after I've done a pass with it because it, it does really really help so I'm gonna do just straight on the bottom of the tail here as you guys can see and uh, this area is really not gonna be seen so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit muddy but this here is important so something like that it's gonna help us out and we can just smooth it back down in some areas and say, hey, okay, look, this area here makes sense. This area here, not so much, but this area here does. And we can use another quick effect that uh, I use uh, consistently. So, for example, you can use the Alpha 08, which is a pretty dirty looking Alpha. Uh, and you can add it on these areas here. Uh, you can also add it on something like the head here with just a spray 
And uh, with the trim dynamic, you can come in here and start to sort of take that down in a few spots. And that'll give you an interesting textured look to some areas like this. So if you come in here now, and uh, since we're dealing with a more subdivision here, ZBrush has really got to think about what it's doing. So it's going to slow down my computer a little bit, but uh, hopefully you guys can still uh, sort of grasp what's going on. So I'm just going to do a little bit more of the trim dynamic stuff. Taking symmetry off, and you can start thinking about uh, adding some more specific details to our creature. So for example, coming in here after you've used the alphas and actually doing some proper hand sculpting is always recommended. Again, we're going to spend just a few minutes here doing this just so you guys have an idea and again, what I expect you guys to do is to just do this that I'm doing but uh, for a little bit longer of a period of time. I'm trying to cover as much as I can as far as like quick and efficient production uh, and design uh, tools that I've you know learned from other people or just sort of figured out on my own in the past uh, few years working with this and uh, I definitely expect you guys to spend a little bit more time than me and really refine what you're doing but for all intents and purposes you know you see now we get more interesting details on the neck here that we can start breaking up with diagonals like this diagonals on the other way around and then you can really get start getting a, an interesting skin effect going so I really like uh, the X and Y technique so you just do an X and then you do a Y an X and you do a Y and then really quickly there we've detailed our neck which is going to be fairly visible and I think that's important now as far as the face goes if you don't want it to be completely smooth I would recommend using something like uh, maybe Alpha 23. It's a pretty harsh alpha, but uh, if you use it uh, with the right intensity here, you can get some pretty interesting results, and you can even pull out some things here. So I would use Alpha 23 for skin, because this actually really shows up uh, on the renders. Since we're going to be using Keyshot for this, uh, you want something that's going to pop and uh, this definitely does it and again smoothing and then using a little bit of the trim dynamic here and there is going to go a long way you can also for example use alpha 58 with a drag rack and then drag some lines on the lips here like this come in with the Damien standard let me uh, reset the Damien standard here do lazy mouse here and then again no symmetry for this part if you can help it okay guys very important to to do it that way there's one area where you're gonna break symmetry off it's gonna be this one here so you can see we add something interesting to our creature and even add a scar something like that uh, now you could do a lot of other things like you know make one of the eyes super hurt and that kind of stuff but that's going to take a long time to make look good so I'm just going to leave it alone as far as the teeth goes uh, you do want to divide these okay a few times definitely do so that you can come in here you can even use the standard brush and just spray here with a uh, pretty low intensity on the teeth and then just Let's see if this alpha works. There you go. Just do something like this to get some sort of a a detail to show up like this. Again, smooth it back down. Don't leave it too strong. But you still got something in there. And that's what really matters. So just something there to break up the surface uh, is going to really help you out. Uh, and other than that, I mean, there's tons of little things that you could do, but I would say that most likely that's really all you need to do right now for this kind of a, of a design. I wouldn't go too crazy with it, honestly. Again, time spent and then uh, 
if it gets approved, it's one thing, you know, then you get to spend more time with it, you get to flesh it out a lot more, and then it really becomes cool. Right now, not the idea. So just come in here, break the symmetry a little bit, and uh, you'll be fine. Don't overdo it. So yeah, I think this is going to be where I'm going to stop here. I'm going to work on the back just a little bit, but this has already given me uh, plenty to think about as far as the shapes go. And now i got to start thinking about colors and just the overall textures that I'm going to use. So if anything, maybe in the next lesson what I'll do is uh, just maybe give it a, a quick base in Photoshop, something like that. Uh, maybe do some tests, you know, some paint overs. We'll see. Uh, I'm not going to show you guys how to export to Keyshot. I know for a fact that there is uh, a ton of uh, tutorials here on Digital Tutors that already explain that process, even ones that I've done before, and I'm trying to keep this the least repetitive as possible. So I think uh, we'll just jump straight into Keyshot. I'll show you my render settings, and then from then we can just really quickly just start working in Photoshop, honestly. And uh, I think that'll be great. So yeah, just breaking this up here with Trim Dynamic. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. We'll go ahead and uh, throw this guy into Keyshot and see what we can do to make him really appealing in a presentation sense.